there's one place where you will probably never bring your gaming laptop, and that is the toilet. The Steam Deck will be the ultimate backlog device, or will it? We're going to be talking about all that and more. Welcome to another episode of Water Break, where we are going to be talking about our beloved Steam Deck, which doesn't come out until, well, you can pre-order it at the end of this year, but it won't realistically be in people's hands until early next year. And I'm really excited, not because I'm going to be playing all the latest AAA games on it. The reason I'm most excited, actually, I'm most excited about all, all sorts of things, but one of the main things I'm really excited about with the Steam Deck is the fact that I'll finally be able to work through my Steam backlog. Let's all be honest. How many of you have actually played any of your backlog games that you said you were going to get through, but you just don't? Because every season, new games come out and you play those instead. Now, that doesn't stop you from every year taking advantage of what's called the Steam Summer Sale and the Steam Winter Sale. And anyone who's new to Steam, what you might not know is that every six months, Steam lowers the prices by like, like some of these games are like 80 to 95% off. <laughs> not, not all of them, but a large number of them are. And so people buy games thinking, sure, it's like $5, I'll play that someday. And they add it to what's called their Steam backlog. But we all know that no one ever really gets around to playing their backlog. And the reason is because something new always comes out that's more exciting. And you're like, okay, I'll only buy one game for the next few months and I'll just play that. And then you play it and it takes you like 80 hours to finish or 50 hours to finish. And you don't actually have as much time as you think you do. It's, it's part of the Steam marketing is getting you to spend all these, I guess they're not really microtransactions, but these small transactions on games that you're not actually going to play. And so you do save a large amount of money over buying them full price, but ultimately you're buying stuff that you don't need until now. And that's why I'm so excited about the Steam Deck because this device, I believe, will become like the ultimate backlog device. And not I'm not talking about like on the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch keeps coming out with games that have been on Steam for the past like five years already. And they're like, finally, we got, a, we got a, a Nintendo Switch port of this game that I've always been interested in, but never got around to playing. And so you buy it and it's sometimes the same price or three times more or four times more expensive for the Nintendo Switch version. But they did all that work porting it over to the Switch. And actually in some of these cases, it is a lot of work porting it over to the Nintendo Switch. But that's like the only time you finally play it is when you buy a game that you already own or had been thinking about buying on Steam for a long time and you just never get around to do it because when you are sat at your desk, and as you can see right now, I'm like sat at my desk with all my gaming stuff ready. I've got a wheel here. I've got all my arcade sticks ready. I've got my laptop set up. It's plugged in with it's in maximum performance mode. I can play all of my high performance games. I'm not going to play those backlog games, the ones that are kind of indie games that I had heard about, which apparently have a really great story, but I'm like, yeah, but I'm sitting in front of my, my main setup now. I may as well play all of my triple A favorites that I've really been enjoying playing, right? And so you think, okay, well maybe when I go to the cafe, I'll bring my laptop, my gaming laptop with me and I'll, I'll get through some of my backlog there. Or, oh, maybe I'm gonna go and visit some relatives for the weekend and that's three days I'll be stuck you know, talking to my relatives and like, I don't want to talk to my relatives the whole time. I'll bring my gaming laptop and I'll catch up on my Steam backlog. You have like all these dreams in your mind, places where you think I'm going to catch up on my Steam backlog. But the truth is you just never get around to doing it. And what is the main reason? Well, if you check out the video that I made last week talking about why I think the Steam Deck has the potential to be like a new form factor to replace gaming laptops in a way. It won't completely replace gaming laptops because there's probably a good 10 or 15% of people who would much prefer to have a full keyboard and a built-in screen. But for, for the large majority of people who are buying gaming laptops just because they need a computer that's not a desktop, but it does have a graphics card in it, they could use this form factor instead. Not a laptop with a screen, but a device that's dockable. So when I'm at home, it becomes sort of my main setup, but I can also pick it straight up off the dock and walk, run around with it, which is one of the main reasons people were so excited about the Nintendo Switch. We didn't need a medium powered games console again. Like we've got plenty of medium powered games consoles, but when the Switch came out, it was one of the only handhelds being made at the time because everyone, a lot of people have left 
the handheld space, mainly because of the smartphone being so popular. And that doesn't mean that smartphones can play the games that Nintendo S Switch can play. It just means that people are playing tons of mobile games and well, if they're too busy playing with their smartphones, they're not spending money on handhelds. Anyway, one company did make a handheld. It was Nintendo. It wasn't Sony, wasn't Microsoft. Nintendo made one. And now Valve is making the Steam Deck. And I think it's really going to succeed in being your backlog device because it replaces your gaming laptop when you're sitting down. Again, we had a whole video talking about this when we made the video last week about Steam Deck replacing potentially gaming laptops. But one of the main things is that when you, even if you're just going straight downstairs to play in front of the TV while watching Netflix, it's just a hassle bringing your gaming laptop. But this goes one step further because even if it's just a hassle to bring your laptop downstairs, there's one place where you will probably never bring your gaming laptop. And that is the toilet. <laughs> Probably the most sacred gaming place that you know in your entire house. And although if asked, most people will probably deny that they play games on the toilet or want to play games on the toilet. I bet you anything that a large majority of people still get their phones out and start playing games on their phone. And they're like, they're, you know, they're thinking on their phone. They're like, I wish I could play some other games that weren't these mobile gacha games. Essentially, I'm not going to make a whole video about it right now. But a lot of the time, you, you think you're playing an RPG, or you think you're playing some sort of action game. What, what you're really doing is you're just pressing the button and spending time. So, and the game is designed to make you just spend time in the app, have your, your eyes looking at the screen, and then eventually logging in every single day. And every single time you get a little bonus, you get that little hit of dopamine. But really what you're doing is you're just paying attention to the app so that eventually you can be tricked into spending money on gambling things like gacha, a whole, sto a whole story to be made in a separate video. <clears throat> but I think a lot of people who play games on Steam or play games on their consoles can agree that they would much rather be playing these console games or these indie games or a lot of their backlog games on the toilet instead of wasting the times on their time on these smartphone games, which some people are really into them, but a lot of people just have them on their phone because it's just easy. And I would rather, I would rather have something on my phone to play rather than nothing, right? So instead of reaching for your phone when you're on the toilet, because this has to happen most, for most people every single day, some number of minutes that you wish that you could be playing games, instead of playing on your phone, you could be getting out your Nintendo Switch, right? And so this is why this form factor is so cool. It's actually fairly powerful. It's not anything compared to the PS4s and the Xbox Ones and the gaming laptops, but it is powerful enough to play, you know, a lot of games like... You, you can play... What version of Doom did they put on this? Did they, they didn't put Doom Eternal on here, did they? Anyway, that doesn't really matter. You can play actually some fairly Im impressive games on your Nintendo Switch, and you can do it on the toilet. And the reason it works really well on the Switch, and probably the reason it's going to work quite well on the Steam Deck as well, is because it has suspend and resume. A lot of PC games are not actually designed to suspend that quickly. Like if you close the flap on your laptop, like either the game has to continue running or if you suspend it, like the game won't really function quite the way that it does on a Nintendo Switch or on a PlayStation 4. These games are designed to like freeze the game in its current state, store it somewhere so that it can be pulled back out of freeze mode instantly. So anyway, there's a large number of reasons why a Nintendo Switch works better on the go than a laptop. But now, the other main reason why I think the Steam Deck is going to work so well on the toilet, and again, I don't actually only mean the toilet, I'm also thinking about, I'm actually going to mention this later, but talking about if you're playing on a, on a bus, see this person here, I mean this is from the Nintendo Switch advert, but this is this, one of the use cases for a handheld gaming device, is that this thing, the Nintendo Switch, when you're holding it like this, if you're on the bus, or you're on the toilet, you're not sitting a, a laptop on your lap. And even if physically you could, you probably wouldn't because the games that you want to play are things like twin stick shooters. Or again, check the previous video for talking about gaming laptops versus Steam Deck. But a lot of the games 
that are on Steam don't really work that well for a trackpad and clicking the, your thumb on the mouse pad. And plus, a lot of laptops have got rid of buttons from the mouse pad. They're all just a large piece of glass. And so it's just not that easy to play these games with your finger on a trackpad and a thumb. Whereas a large number of these games actually probably work quite well with the Steam Deck form factor, which as you can see, if you're not familiar with the buttons on this thing, it's got touchpads over here, which kind of emulate a mouse style interface, but you've also got trigger buttons on the back. So if you check out the tech specs on here, you've got basically thumb controls on these trackpads, but then on the back, you've got triggers, like you would usually use the paddles on your sticks like this. And so you've also got analog sticks and your D-pad and your buttons. And well, it's a large, discussion to be had, but there are just so many games that will benefit from having this control scheme as opposed to trying to make it work with your gaming laptop's keyboard and the, and the trackpad. And who knows, maybe you have buttons on your trackpad, maybe you don't have buttons on your trackpad. But if you were to try and balance your gaming laptop on your lap while you're sitting on the bus or sitting on the toilet, let's say you don't want to use the keyboard and the trackpad. Let's say you want to just bring your Bluetooth controller and you're fine with it. You're like, okay, I'll play with my gaming laptop in performance mode, not max performance mode, just the sort of balanced power mode. So the battery's lasting, okay, a few hours, so I can bring this with me downstairs to play in the living room or on the bus or on the toilet, but I'm gonna balance it on my lap and I'm just going to use my Bluetooth controller, right? Let's say that you are actually on the bus. Now that now you've got like a laptop balancing on your legs and if the train or the bus stops, this thing is gonna go flying or you're like resting your hands on it. And you've also got your pad controller out. And then for example, let's say that you are in the living room, you've also got your power cable plugged into it. It's just a weird, very awkward setup and not something that happens very quickly when you're like, I need the toilet. I'm going to pick up my gaming laptop and I'm going to take out all the cables, I'm going to bring the power cable and I'm going to set up my Bluetooth controller. You're more likely to pick up the device that is already designed to be picked up immediately without any forward planning and just taken to a toilet. And that's what this device is. That's what this device is. It is not what this device is. This device is not designed to be picked up immediately and taken to a toilet or taken to a bus, or da taken downstairs to the living room. Or, like in most situations, a lot of people who still live with their parents, right? You don't actually know when dinner's gonna be ready, right? You're just not in charge of eating, of cooking the dinner. You're in charge of eating the dinner, of course. And when your mother or your father calls, down from da up, calls up from downstairs, they're like, honey, it's time to eat now. Are you going to pick, are you going to be able to pause your gaming laptop and, and or, or you're just gonna leave it on in pause. Are you gonna have it in suspend mode or are you just gonna click pause and just have it run at full power? A lot of these things are part of the discussion which, which makes these devices so much better for taking downstairs or putting on in suspend mode or bringing to the toilet or taking to the living room or taking to the bus. And so that's the reason I've actually got this image out here is that Nintendo released information about this Nintendo Switch, the OLED model. And actually it's got some really cool features. One of them is a, a kickstand actually. That's quite cool and something that you don't get with the Steam Deck. But the main picture I wanted to show you was when Nintendo did their marketing for this, they were just like, you are probably going to take this out and about with you. You're probably going to get the Switch out on the bus and play it. You're probably gonna get the bus, get the bus out. You're gonna probably get the Switch out when you're waiting for the bus like even just sitting at that stand and you know, it's like, okay, it's only five minutes, but you know, you can play a game of Tetris or you can play a game of Puyo Puyo or so you could advance one of your story-based adventure games on your, on your Nintendo Switch, but you're unlikely to be standing at the bus and go, hmm, maybe I'll get my gaming laptop out and sort of balance it in one hand and try and get through a game. And the other thing about a gaming laptop is that the screen is huge, right? So. You want to be inconspicuous when you're playing your games, right? And <laughs> holding out your gaming laptop like a pizza while you're standing at the bus stop and playing whatever game it is, like people are just gonna stare at you, but they're probably not gonna stare at you if you've got this little six and a half, seven inch screen on your Nintendo Switch or even smaller, if you're playing on your phone, which is like a five inch screen or a five and a half inch screen, or maybe even if you've got the iPhone Super Pro Max Ultra Maximums phone, even so, it probably has a maximum of a six and a half or seven inch screen, right? And so I really do think that the Steam Deck has some serious potential to be your backlog machine. Sorry, it's just zoomed itself out here. 
I think it has the potential to be your backlog machine, just in terms of form factor. But the other thing that I think makes it ideal as your backlog machine is that it's limited in terms of power. And so you're going to whip this thing on, right? And you're going to go, okay, well, it can run a lot of these AAA games. And apparently they've been working hard to make sure that all the latest titles will run at least on this at, you know, maybe 30 FPS, which is not ideal. And certainly I, I don't think I would want to play any of my fighting games at 30 FPS, but the more AAA style adventure games are like, like what they're showing here. Like, I don't think I would really want to play this on my Steam Deck uh, compared to playing my backlog. Because when I'm sitting in front of my gaming laptop, I'm like, you know what? I could play through my backlog or I could take full advantage of this power and play all my super powered, extra exciting games that have just come out this year. But when I pick up my Switch, I'm like, okay, I'm going to play these cool indie titles that I don't usually bother playing, right? And the same thing goes with the Steam Deck, except there are so many more of those indie games. Like a ton of them have been releasing on the Nintendo Switch as well, but it's nothing compared to the Steam library, which you can obviously play on your PC or on your laptop or play on the upcoming Steam Deck. So I think it's one of those cases where it's creativity, which is born out of restriction or necessity. And you're like, well, now I have this device, which is very, very convenient and plays some of my Steam library, but it's not, it doesn't excel. It doesn't excel at playing my AAA games, but it does handle with no trouble my indie library, my backlog library. All the games that require less power, but are still fantastic games because they've got a great storyline or because they're just very, very clever or just because they're very original or because, I don't know, they've just, been, you've heard really great things about it, but you couldn't really be bothered to like spend some time on it when you've, you're tempted by other things. And that's what it is with a gaming laptop and your desktop PC. You don't really get around to your backlog. And it's not because those games are bad. It's because you're distracted by other things that you're convinced are better or because you're, ha you're more guaranteed to have a predictable experience. And the predictable experience that I think people want is I want to have fun with the short amount of time that I've got left to play games today because maybe either you're a student or you've got a job or you've just got to do other things today. Sometimes it gets to the evening when you finally finish writing your essay and it's like, Whew, okay, it's 10 o'clock. I could go to bed early or I could play games for about half an hour. And I think it's difficult to always be in the perfect situation to play your backlog library when you're like, okay, well, I've, I'm, I've got the power. I've got the power. So I'm just going to play my AAA games. But with this Steam Deck, if you had one, again, so this is not like which device is more powerful. That's absolutely not the question. It's like, if you have one and it's not perfect for playing your AAA games library, why don't you do what it actually excels at, which is playing your backlog. And I really think that this is going to be like the ideal device for it. And not just because of the form factor and the shape, but because you're not distracted by your more power hungry, super famous, most recent exciting games titles. <sighs> so I'm quite excited about the Steam Deck coming out. And it sounds weird to say, whoa, I can't wait to play the new console so I can try out all the latest games. Because actually for me, I think it's the, it's the opposite. I'm really excited about a brand new console. It's not console, but it's a console style PC handheld device. I'm really excited about this latest console coming out so that I can play all my old games. And even though that sounds like a weird thing to say, I think it's something that's very, very relatable. And hopefully, hopefully you, you all agree. If you don't agree, obviously leave a comment and say like, no, if I'm gonna buy a new device, I wanna play the latest games. But I am really excited about playing the games that I already own that haven't got around to trying on the Steam Deck. So there's actually one last thing I want to mention about the Steam Deck, which I think is gonna make it ideal for being a backlog machine. And it's the fact that this does not have maybe as good storage 
as your desktop PC or your gaming laptop, right? With a gaming laptop or with a PC or even a PS4 or an Xbox, you can attach external storage, right? And I mean, I think the conversation gets a little more complicated with PS5 and the Xbox Series X because of the, the speed of the data that transport. You, you have to have like a certain type of SSD that's fast enough to store games on, on certain PS5 games, right? But in general, when you're playing on your PC, you can hook up any cheap external hard drive and it'll run your Steam library just fine because before the game actually runs, it loads all that information into the RAM and you're playing at proper normal speed. Maybe the loading, maybe the initial loading time will be a bit slow, but it can still run. And according to the tests that they did and went with IGN, apparently when IGN, because they were like the first people allowed to have a hands-on with the Steam Deck, apparently all the footage they took was games loaded on their Steam library from SD cards. And again, it's because the game, even though a game does need to be transferred from the SD card to the RAM memory of the, of the device, once it's loaded on, the game is now loading it, the game from RAM, right? Or only in certain situations will it be like loading data, you know, from the hard disk as well. But like they are, you know, that's all down to game design. That's a different conversation. But the point is, from the initial tests that we've heard, apparently games run just fine from the SD card. But what's even more exciting is when you think about what was said on this particular video. So this is a video taken by IGN and it was called Steam Deck Valve Talks Hardware Power. In this video, when they were talking about the Steam Decks, there's a, a little bit of information that I hadn't heard before. And it was this part where they actually said that apparently SD cards running the game have been just fine and they're hot swappable. I don't know if this is actually how it works already, but this is something they've been testing. And you can't do this on, well, you can do this obviously on Steam, but you have to like reload the library or sometimes it doesn't find it for me. It's a bit finicky on my PC. Like if I take a hard drive out and then I plug it back in, it'll be like, it'll like see the drive, but it won't actually load the game back into my library. But I'm hoping that this is something that they have kind of streamlined and made work well for the Steam Deck on Steam OS 3, which is the OS that will be shipping with this device, right? But what they're saying here is that it's actually been, I think they've been testing it and it's been working fine, where you just plug this SD card in and then you take it out and you can just swap in other game libraries. And so you could potentially have one 256 or 512 gig SD card with, I don't know, 40 to 50, maybe 60 of your backlog games, plug that in. And then when you're actually sitting here docked and you're at home and you know that you're not going anywhere, you could just take that out without turning the device off and put your AAA games library SD card and slot that back in, slot that in. So instead of like having a separate cartridge for every single game, you've just got like mini discs. I can't believe that that is the analogy I've just come to, but essentially anyone who remembers the mini disc, it was actually amazing because at the time having all of your music on a single device was kind of not possible unless you had an iPod. And even then, even if you have an iPod today, if you have a device which is like a gigabyte of storage, it still won't, probably wouldn't handle as much music as you might want to put on it, which is why we use streaming services instead, because now you can access like every song that was ever written on earth at any point because you're just streaming it from the internet. But that doesn't work really perfectly for games. Not yet on your 4G connections. But maybe that will change with 5G, but that's besides the point. What I want to point out is with the Nintendo Switch, if you actually take out the SD card, I had actually, I'd actually never tried this until today, but if you actually pop out the SD card while the device is running, and it takes, you know, it takes a few seconds to switch this thing off and, and reboot it. If you take the SD card out, it has this error and it says, the micro SD card has been removed. The console will now turn off. You're forced to switch the device off and then switch it back on again if you want to put in a different card. But the, from the video that they're showing here, it is suggesting that you'll be able to hot swap these cards in and just get the other library. So it's like, okay, backlog library in. Actually, I don't want to play my, my backlog right now. I've got some extra time. I'm sitting in front of the couch. I've got nowhere to go later. I'm actually going to dip my toes into some of the more recent AAA titles. And then you just swap in your AAA games SD card. And ideally, you only really need like two of them. I'm gonna put 
50 or 60 of my backlog games on one of these cards, and I'm going to put maybe three or four of my most current recent AAA games titles on a separate card. I'll just bring those two SD cards around. And you know what? You could bring 10 of these around if you have enough money to buy 10 of these, but they're small enough that you can do that. So that's another reason why I think it's quite exciting that we might be able to use this as a backlog device because it's not like, yeah, you can run Steam on it, but there's not enough storage. Like the base model only has 64 gigs or the, the mid model only has 20, 256 gigs. And once I've got my three AAA games titles on there, I've got enough space for maybe one and a half or two indie titles as well. And okay, that's not exactly going through your backlog. But if you th consider the use case where you're swapping micro SD cards in and out really, really easily, and hopefully hot swappable without having to switch the whole device on and off, which is what just happened with my Nintendo Switch. And I know that's a, that's a very first world problems type thing, but it is kind of a hassle. It, it's enough to deter you from actually getting into the game. You're like, okay, well, I don't have my AAA games SD card in here, so I'm going to just play whatever's already in here. If it is hot swappable and doesn't rec doesn't involve turning the console on and off, then even standing at the bus stop, you go, okay, the bus is going to arrive in the next five to 10 minutes. You might actually do it. You might actually take the SD card out and put, put your other SD card into it to access your backlog library. Something that you might not do if your console required you to turn it off and on again, which is of course the universal way to fix everything as well. I think for all these reasons, it's really exciting to think about the Steam Deck as like the ideal backlog device. And like I said earlier, it's just really funny that <laughs> I'm excited about a new device coming out, but mainly so that I can play old games. And in many cases, games that I have already paid for and owned for years, I've actually owned a large number of games for years that I haven't ever bothered to play because I'm like, okay, well, I'm sitting out down at my setup. I'm going to get my arcade stick out and play the latest fighting game that everyone's online playing right now. But I don't know, just to tame a random game off the top of my head. Like, I own Fable. I remember hearing some good stuff about Fable, but I've owned that for probably five years. I think I've owned that game on my Steam library for about five years because it was really cheap on a Steam sale. How is it possible that a person can buy a game five years back and not play it? It was like, it was like three or four dollars and apparently it's quite famous and it has quite a good reputation. For five years, I just could not will myself to, to bother to load it up when I could be playing other things instead. Like I'm sitting in front of my PC, may as well play the other games instead. If it were on my backlog, and I can, I can also mention that I have been going through some of my backlog thanks to Steam Link, then I think I would probably just press it and go, yeah, why not? I've got half an hour free. Oh, okay. And I don't have to set up my Bluetooth controller and I don't have to plug in my power cable and I don't need to get a special mat so that my laptop doesn't burn my thighs. You know, it's all just right there. You just pick it up. The controls are already built in. And even if it's a game that requires a mouse, it's already got a trackpad built in. It's got solutions that will make this stuff work. Even if you're not, without setup is basically what I'm trying to say. Without prior thinking about it because that is one of the main reasons why we don't play our backlog it's because we're never really thinking about it like okay i'm gonna catch up on my backlog on friday at 8 p.m you're never gonna <laughs> well some people are but most people are not going to plan their lives like that it's more like i've got half an hour free now pick up the steam deck oh cool okay yeah i haven't played that game before might try it and the reason I think this is actually going to work quite well is because I've been doing that on Steam Link. Now, this is something that not many people, I think, are taking advantage of, but it is quite awesome how fast Steam Link works if you've got your computer set up with a wired connection. So I do, I have to like work, I have to, I have to, I spend time with my family in the living room, right? But that's not where my gaming setup stuff is. My gaming setup is in this room, right? but it's ethernet connected to my router and I've got a cable connected to my computer in the living room. So while I'm spending time with my family and helping out with tasks that need, who knows, you know, it's, it's just like, I, I need you to hold this. I need you to do this and do this. And they're like things that I have to do right there and then. So it's much easier if I spend most of my time in the living room, not cooped up in this gaming room. I don't want to be in this gaming room. I want to be with my family. And in the in-between moments, 
that's when I would like to be playing on my Steam Deck. And the reason I know that is because I've already been trying it with my MacBook Air. I've been playing on Steam Link, which is a completely free application, which if you've used it before, you already know, it allows you to access your running computer in a different room. So the computer has to be on. That's one of the inconveniences of it. But if it is on, you just boot up Steam Link and you can run your games with fairly low latency. And there's a large number of games on my backlog, which I can I only choose to play because they they don't suffer if you have latency. So one of the games that I've been thinking about getting into is the Steins Gate Chaos Child series, right? It's like a visual novel kind of thriller suspense style. The other one that we started before was Dangan Romper, but never really finished it. I just can't find these situations where I'm like, I'd would rather play those games. But I do actually want to know what happens in the rest of the story, like the th suspense thrillers. I want to know who dies, right? And with Steam Link, I've actually been doing that been actually getting into it because I'm like, well, here are the games that don't really work without low latency. And yeah, okay, I, the fighting games do kind of work, but I don't want to go online and lose ranking points and have my whole rank sink just because I'm trying to play a fighting game through Steam Link. I'll play the games like these adventures and these story-based games that have no effect. There's no, uh, there's no negative effect to the game if there's latency. And it's going to get even better with the Steam Deck because again, it's a device where it's like, okay, it's now convenient enough that it's right here, but also it has no like latency. And also on this tiny little SD card, with like, I've got 256 gigabytes of my backlog, I can just load them up right now and play them. And then it's just like, hey, I need your help. I need you to hold this thing while I take care of the baby. You're like, okay, I'm there. I'll hold that thing. And I'm ready to do it because my console can be put into suspend mode immediately. Hard to do with a laptop, hard to do with a desktop, you know, I might have to stand there holding that plate for half an hour. It's just like much better if I can put my device in suspend mode rather than having like sit there on pause, just killing, depleting the battery. You don't want to be in that situation where you're like, I put my laptop on pause. I ended up having to help out for like an hour over there. I don't want to resent the person who needed my help for an hour. I want to be happily, I want to be pre totally prepared to say, sure, I can help you. You need me for an hour? No problem. You need me to help you for two hours? No problem. I'm not thinking about whether my laptop needs to be shut down properly and having its battery conserved. I can just click suspend, the screen goes off, and that is the experience that this device provides. And that's why it's so cool. But as we've discussed before, this is not a rival to the Steam Deck. Steam Deck is not a rival to this device. They just share a form factor. They share, or so they share, they share a shape. They share a lot of the ways that you might use them, but they're not rivals. And man, I'm really looking forward to playing this new device just so that I can get through all my old games. Is that a good enough reason to buy a brand new device? Is that a good enough reason to be excited about a brand new device? Should I be spending 400 or how much? What are the prices on the Steam Deck again? And the prices are 400 or 500 or 650. Here we go. $400, 529 dollars or 650 dollars. Should I really be spending 650 dollars, which can get you a moderate like gaming laptop? Should I really be spending, you know, this much money on a gaming handheld just so I can play old games that I bought five years ago that no one else is playing right now, but I bought them because I had heard good things about them. For me, I'm really excited. And I think that's a plenty good enough reason to go out and spend money on a brand new device to get through these games that I know are good and have a good reputation. And it's just like, it's difficult to find time. Or rather, it's not difficult to find the time to play your backlog. It's difficult to plan the time to play your backlog. And that's why I think this device is going to work superbly well. Anyway, do you agree? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments section below. If you're not already subscribed to the channel and you like these little discussions about games consoles or if you like talking about hardware as well, I unbox a lot of stuff and test controllers all the time, subscribe to the channel, please. And if you'd like to see me actually playing some of these games and talking about stuff or if you want to ask questions that you haven't really been able to get an answer from me in the comments section then do pop over to the Twitch stream where I often play these games and chat and field all the questions that come in through the chat and if you aren't following me already on Twitter do follow me there 
And if you want to chat with other people who are in, into this sort of thing, controllers, handhelds, hardware, games, Japan, all that stuff, you can join us on the Nihongo Gamer Discord, which is the community area. It's like the community app, if you're not familiar with it. You download it, and you can just chat and meet other people with similar interests and talk about stuff. And often, especially with gaming, you can find other people to play niche games with, which is especially common with fighting games. You're just like looking for people to play this one game that no one else is playing, but it's like you go into a community and you can just find people and just ask them straight up, hey, do you want to connect to this game right now so that we can have a game of this thing that I just can't find anyone in the public lobbies? Awesome, let's go. The link to the Discord is in the description below. I'm looking forward to playing some old games that I have already purchased. Don't forget to hit the like button. I'll see you all in the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream.